Welcome to part 4 of our series on building a Zelda Light game in Phaser 3. Now that we've implemented player input, it's time to test it out and ensure our controls are working as expected. If you're new here, this is part of a full series where we create a Zelda inspired game from scratch. Check out the playlist link in the description to start from the beginning. Alright, let's jump in and put our input system to the test. To start testing our keyboard component, we'll update our player class to have an instance of our keyboard component, and as the player provides input, we'll update our player to play different animations based on the key that was pressed. To do this, let's jump over to our game scene, and we need to create an instance of our keyboard component. Let's add a new property to our class. We're going to call this controls, and we'll reference our keyboard component. And down on our create method, we'll do this.controls to be equal to a new instance of our keyboard component, we need to pass in our phaser import keyboard plugin. So we'll do this.input and we'll do keyboard. And so to fix our IntelliSense issue, we just need to add a safeguard to make sure our input keyboard is actually enabled on our game. Uh, by default, this is typically enabled for your phaser games, but you can disable it in your configuration settings. So to add this safeguard at the top of our create method, we're just gonna add a return statement if it's not available. So we'll do if not, our input keyboard. Uh, so if it doesn't exist, if it's not enabled, then we'll just log a message. So we're gonna do console.warn and we'll say our phaser keyboard plugin is not set up properly. And so we'll add in a return statement. All right, so when our game refreshes, oh, we need to update our references. So if we come into our keyboard component at the top of our file, let's add in our phaser import. So we're gonna copy this from our player class. We'll paste that into our keyboard component. Now we jump back over to our game scene. Now we need to pass our controls to our player class. So we'll add a new property to our configuration. We're just going to call it controls. And we'll pass in this in our controls instance. We jump back over to our player class. Let's update our config. Uh, so after our frame, we're going to add in controls. For our controls, we're going to type this to be our input component. Now that we have our input component in our player class, we can now check for our keyboard presses and then update our player's animation when one of our keys is pressed. For this check, we need to do this in our update method of our phaser scene. So with the phaser game engine, once our scene is first started and is created, it will then start invoking our update method. And this update method is going to be invoked multiple times per second, so each tick of our game loop. And inside this loop, this is where we'll want to do things like check for our player input and check for collisions. To do this check, Let's add an update method to our player class. We'll have a return void. And now we need to reference our controls. So we'll update our player class to have a reference to our controls. And so this will be our input component. Now we'll store our reference. Well, if this controls will be equal to our config uh, controls. Now down in our update method, we can check to see if one of our keys is being pressed and then do our uh, animation. So let's start with our vertical movement. So we'll do if our controls and is up down. Then we'll play our animation for our idle up. So let's copy this line of code here. Let's paste that. We'll change our reference. We'll have idle, we'll have up, and we'll add in one more configuration setting and we'll set this to be true. So if this animation is already playing, then Phaser will not restart this animation and it'll just keep playing the animation that's already playing. So this will be nice if we're holding our up key, then we won't keep restarting our animation. So now we'll want to check for our other directions. And so we'll do else, and we'll say if our controls is down, down. Now we want to do idle down. Now we'll do our horizontal movements. So we're just going to copy all this code here. Let's paste it. Now we'll do is left down. We'll do our idle. We'll do our side. And we'll do the same thing for when our right is down. So now to invoke our update method, we either need to update our game scene to have the update method here and then manually call update on our player, or we can register an event listener for when our scene is updated and automatically uh, call this from our player class. So to do that, we'll come up to our constructor. Let's do our config. We're going to reference our phaser scene. We'll reference our events and we'll do on, and we're going to listen for our phaser, our scenes, our events and we want to listen for our update event to our scene. So when the phaser engine's running, it's going to emit this event anytime it's time for our scene to actually do our update, and then that's what's going to trigger our update method on our scene. By listening for this event, we can now also run this code once that event fires. So when our update event is sent, we just want to run our update method for our player class. And we'll pass in this to have the context of our player. And because we're registering our event emitter, we want to make sure we clean this up properly when our scene is shut down. So we're going to do config, we'll do scene, we'll do our events, and we'll do once 
And so when we get our phaser scenes, our events, and we get our shutdown event, so this will be emitted once our scene is shutting down. So if we transition to another scene and we stop this current scene, this would actually fire this event. And when this happens, now we want to turn off our event listener for our update method. So inside here, we'll just add in our callback. I'm gonna copy this line of code here. And so just to turn off our event, we just call off. And then we need to provide the same arguments that we provided when we turned it on. So one thing to note is when we use the on method, this is going to allow us to listen for the event every time it's fired. Once we'll add a one time listener uh, for that event. So for our shutdown, we only care about this happening one time. And so once this is invoked, if it was ever fired again, we would ignore that event. So now that our code changes, let's come back over to our game scene. And now if we press our arrow keys, we'll see our player now rotates into that direction and it plays that animation. So one thing we need to fix is when we do our left key, we'll see it's gonna play our animation for our side and how our player asset is set up. All of our animations for our side will always face to the right. So to handle when our player wants to move left, we'll need to flip our game object so it faces in the correct direction. To make that quick change, we'll come over to where we do is left down. We're just gonna call this, we'll do set flip X and we'll set that to be true. When we press our left key, and then if we press our right key, we're gonna go ahead and flip this back and we'll set it to be false. So now if we press left, we'll see our player faces to the left and we play the same animation. That's it for this part of the series. If you found this helpful, be sure to hit the like button. It really helps out the channel. And if you're following along, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss the next video. If you have any questions or wanna share your progress, drop a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. All right, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.